Uh, we're going to be shorter because we have a full presentation later in the day because our time is now running out. Uh, we're going to present the Wind Ranger Exchange. And we're going to start to, we are based in South Africa in the Halahari Transfrontier Park. And uh, sorry. Uh, as I mentioned, we will have later a full presentation, so we will just go quick through the things. Uh, we got a land claim in 2099 that we got land back as the Komanisan people. And uh, here is just a GIS map of our land that we got back. And I'm just going to explain our heritage park, uh, which is managed by uh, our, we as the Komanisan people and the Mir community. But the heritage park is uh, the South African National Parks currently undertake the day-to-day -day conservation management of our heritage park, which is a contract park uh, with a national park, park status, but we are the private owners. And our long-term vision is to manage our heritage park ourselves. Students currently around at, enrolled at South African Wildlife College, Ranger Strength Act. Uh, we also have a Ranger Monitor resource um, use, which we use a cyber tracker for GIS mapping to monitor our resource use as a harvest of plants, um, counting our game, and so forth. And here is some of the rangers busy doing cyber tracking for collecting plants for harvesting. And here is the cyber tracker we use. As you see, we have put on the uh, medicinal plant names for if people want to collect the different things, they will go start the date, the name, where the uh, where the plant is based and that kind of thing. And then we have our traditional farms um, where we do our game farms and do uh, uh, rangers management and monitoring our wildlife. So on the traditional farms we have Aaron uh, where we do uh, hunting and we have rangers that do the day-to-day -day management, including wildlife, checking fences, maintaining water points, and anti-poaching protocols, ecotourism, commercial outings for income generation and employment. Um, I'm going to give to my colleague, Jacobus Vatboy, to go further. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jacobus Vatboy from the Komanisan in South Africa, in the Northern Cape, in a semi-desert, it's very warm and dry. And I will shortly do a brief for you of, of our hunting on Aaron, the game farm. And uh, so what you can see, it's our hunting season. And during the winter times, uh, there's many hunters come to support us to hunt on, uh, on the farm. Took off our own uh, guides, hunting guides. And you can see it's, it's our cool room. And this guy is young man. And he's also the uh, uh, field rangers who, who do day by day Patrol is uh, manage the fences, the water holes, the wild animals, look for poaching. You, you can see here, we are busy with a uh, water hole. The pump was broken and we put it out to, for a new one. And uh, yeah, 
this is our story, but I, I think later in the day, we had a, a whole presentation. And thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I'm here back again. Uh, we've got a, privile a privilege to visit one of uh, the Australian National Park in Kakadu. And I'd like to share uh, experience that we got from Kakadu uh, with you here. Now you can see some pictures of our rangers in Kakadu uh, National Park just recently. Uh, here now is, uh, you can see, some of our rangers were hiking on, on the rocks here in Australia. You know, it's very rare to come to Australia. It's a long distance, <laughs> and it actually is very costly. So, here actually we gain some experience. You can see we found some uh, waterfalls. There's water coming down uh, the Jim Jim Falls. We managed to go there. And uh, you can see us uh, uh, swimming inside there. Very happy. Yeah. Uh, we also managed to go to the rockets. And actually, some, some of the uh, traditional uh, here in, uh, South, in, uh, in Australia are similar to some of us in Africa, especially our tribe, Maasai tribe. We also have some shrine places. We respect them, and we also keep them aside to, for uh, future generations. So as I saw here in Australia, they also protect these rockets. Uh, you can see very amazing pictures. <laughs> One of our sister here was this at a termite hill. <laughs> which is different from the ones we have in Africa. The ones we have there are very short. And actually, and I, these ones are so long, you see. Yeah. Uh, you also have to manage to go around the water there. Wow, oh, so it's amazing, really. Actually, we got some experience on uh, crocodiles. One crocodile was trapped by the, some guys there down, the Aboriginal people and the Kakadu Rangers, we managed to touch it, which is, in Africa, it's hard to touch a crocodile. It's really, actually, it opens the mouth and wow. So, <laughs> so it was an amazing uh, trip in Kakadu. So you can see, we're all <laughs> happy touching. Everybody was like, can I touch it? Can I touch it? Yeah, so. Uh. And really, uh, we also managed to go to the abo Aboriginal crafts, uh, women's weaving. One of our sister was joined them. She was being taught on how to weave the baskets and so on. But the communication was a bit uh, was a barrier because we wanted to communicate, but you know, it's hard to communicate. Some of them doesn't understand English, and some of us we don't understand the the language they use here. Uh, there are also some uh, paintings there. No, you Australian people, you like painting pictures of uh, crocodiles and kangaroos. <laughs> and back in Africa, we, we, we have printings of elephants, Maasai jumping high, yeah? some cultural things, which is actually very similar because of the traditional things. Now, <laughs> we have uh, one of our rangers, uh, Francis here, interacting with an old man who used to do uh, drawings there. See, Francis was very much happy and excited to meet the man. They don't speak. You know, they talk by gestures. You know, no one understands each other. The old man doesn't understand English, <laughs> and Francis doesn't understand the, the other language. So it was like, yeah, you know, which was very much amazing. And you can see uh, Francis joining uh, craftswomen in uh, uh, weaving, <laughs> which is actually in our traditional way of life back in Africa, in Kenya, the Masai uh, women used to do this kind of uh, beddings, you know, 
which is different, actually, because here they do weaving, and there they, okay, they have some ropes, and they put in the beads. They make it very much different, so which is actually very similar, traditionally, because this is a traditional way of life, and this is our traditional way of life. So I, we actually learned that each traditional have way of doing things. Fire management. And in fire management here, in some of our parks in Africa, we don't uh, do burnings because we are pastoralists, and actually our livestock also depend on the grass. And here, there are no livestock all over. So they have to burn the grasses. And there we don't. If we see you burning the grasses, we have to take you to court. <laughs> because our livestock will lose uh, food, which is very bad. And here, actually, we participated in uh, fire management. And it was bitter to see you burning grasses, actually. But we, we've done it because we have, we have done it because in, we are in Australia. But I wish you could take the grass back home. Uh, you can see our friend here from Tanzania is also burning. Our sister joined also us. Whatever we do, she wants to do. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Okay, we, can, we also have interaction with the Kakadu Rangers there. They are very amazing people, very good people. Interaction, talking to each other, exchanging of ideas, knowledge, and everything. We have something to take back home. We've seen uh, the yellow, what, yellow water cruise. We managed to go around there with a the boat. And we saw some crocodiles, birds, yeah? Uh, toto, a long tail, was it long necked tortoise, tortoise inside the water? And yeah, <laughs> that's the end of it. We managed to have one of our guys from. Uh, uh, Africa, who had a, a birthday here in Australia. So, our friends here from environmental management here in Australia, and uh, our friends also bought some balloons, cakes. That's how you guys will celebrate the birthday. And back there, we don't take my tribe, I don't take as a big issue, you know. You know, we are pastoralists, and actually, I, don't, I can't tell you when I was born. Because we used to move from one place to another, looking for green pastures. And uh, we don't take as important things there. But here we, we, go, we, we ate cakes. So some balloons here. <laughs> we also some, uh, sang a song called Happy Birthday, Happy Birthday, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Which was actually it's an exposure. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's, that's the end of it. Hope you enjoy. Yeah. I don't know whether, uh, whether you have some questions regarding the first presentations of uh, wildlife conservation in Africa and so on. I don't know whether we have time okay, for the questions. And... Okay, cool. Any question is welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that in, uh, interesting insight into your uh, exchange experience uh, from Africa to Australia. Um, it's difficult to imagine the challenges that you face in uh, conserving your important species in your ho own home country, um, but great to see some adaptive management examples being created and also um, you enjoying uh, your time over here. Um, just want to uh, introduce uh, Philip McCarthy and Damien Williams to the stage. Um, yeah, this is a exchange that I was uh, lucky enough to be a part of. So if I could just uh, ask those guys to come up and um, we'll present on our experience traveling to Canada, uh, meeting First Nations uh, peoples within Canada. Good afternoon, could be afternoon now, it's been a long day. Um, we, I think this journey was an amazing journey, but it's a, it's, we basically went there to promote the Ranger program, the IPA, you know, talk about the work we do. Um, we 
all had different, you know, different um, parts to talk about. Um, before I get into that, I'm, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the Larica people for being here. Um, um, the organizers of this event, it's a wonderful event. Um, and again, my elders back at home, past and present, for giving us this opportunity to become rangers and to look up care for country. Um, I'll just talk about what I was talking about. My GD was there was actually talk about the social economic benefits of having full-time rangers on country. Um, we've never had a program like this. The ranger program is a wonderful movement throughout the top end of Australia and now it's extending further down south. In a lot of our indigenous communities around Australia and all over the world, uh, rely on government handouts. Um, we don't have huge economical opportunities in our communities, some of us because of the isolation, some of us because we don't have huge places to develop or stuff. We don't have mining in some of our areas. Some, are, some of us are lucky. Um, but what we discovered in Canada, we, um, we're very similar. You know, our, the journey of the indigenous people of Australia and the journey of the First Nation people of Canada is similar. They had the struggles. They had what we call um, stolen, what we call stolen generation here. They have what they call state schools over there, and they have huge problems with mining and damming and forestry, and no rights like we have in Australia. So we're running parallel with what's happening over there, and probably parallel to most of First Nation people throughout Australia and throughout the world. Um, so the, the Ranger movement is probably one of the most best movements in Australia and worldwide. Um, you know, we can't keep talking about it, how important the Rangers are. You know, you can't get better people to look after a country than people who actually come from country, you know. We know every tree is out there, we know everything that's been brought to our country, that's been passed on from, from elders, you know, down for generation to generation. You know, when all these resources go, when, the, when the, um, the, the major minerals and resources that these multinational countries take out, we'll be left with the precious land that we've been carrying for hundreds of years, and that's what's going to keep us surviving for a long time. Our land, our culture, and our people, they're going to be coming back to us to survive because how we look after the country and how we use the resources around there. But I'm going to go back a bit more on the socioeconomic benefits. You know, a lot of our young people throughout the Australia and throughout the world, we don't have opportunities. We don't have the luxuries. You know, we, a lot of them mobbed on Phoenix High School. So to get a young man or a young lady off the street and give them the opportunity to have a full-time job, then to also get a qualified certificate is probably one of the amazing um, things that's happening in Australia and probably one of the best things that's coming out of the federal government is giving young men and women full-time job. You know, the money they earn actually goes out throughout that community. You know, they, they're able to take the elders out, they're able to, you know, have a decent way of living, have, they're able to afford higher education, they're able to afford to send kids away, and become role models for their people. So the money we earn just spreads out to our, you know, wider community, and the money stays in there. It's a, just a wonderful moment. Um, you know, you've got young people coming through, and we're becoming role models. You know, we, we want to become a ranger. They're working hard. They're a very committed group. They, they're carrying up the country, you know, our country, the place we live, and they benefit from it. So we are not only looking after the country for us, but for the wider world. Um, but the socioeconomic benefits, again, just goes to everybody. We're keeping our young men and women at home. They don't have to go to this horrible mining industry where you have to fly in and fly out, put pressure on your family. You're taking young, healthy men and women to um, get job, to survive. And they take this way. You know, these guys are probably the major providers of our elders back at home, our people. So you take them away. They don't provide the traditional food. They don't have the opportunity to take people right back to country. What brings alive our elders. So I went there to promote the social economic benefits and how governments and you know, indigenous people can work together. We look after small areas, 
my tribe, the Body Guy tribe, we've got eight ranges. We cover, well, you know, about 1,400 square kilometers. When we went to Canada, they have one stewardess that cover millions and millions of acres. So it's very long we're behind in the movements what's happening here. So hopefully, um, you know, this can catch on the ranger movements and, and the benefits that we get from employing young indigenous people. You know, you get thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, that money goes a long way for an individual. It covers entire families, entire tribe. You know, to put an indigenous person in jail, Hundred and thirty, maybe hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's more important to keep people out there and provide these wonderful opportunities with rangers. So I'm I'm very proud to be a ranger. I'm very proud to be standing in front of so much indigenous people from all over the world and the wonderful work that we do in preserving our country and Mother Earth. Um Yes, I suppose we'll uh, let you know a little bit about the context of the trip that we went over there for, and I suppose um, we're lucky the timing and uh, the Australian government had just launched the, the WIN network um, and they needed to uh, have an exchange. So we were supported by the Australian government and Pew um, Environment Group to go over and uh, meet um, with uh, numerous uh, First Nations groups and organisations over there. Um, I think... Uh, you know, it was a it was a sort of a good timing to to show off all the things that we've been doing in Australia through the Indigenous Protected Area Program and the Working on Country Ranger Program, which was done to show all those uh, socio-economic benefits as well as all the great um, uh, conservation ben biodiversity benefits back to the country. So um, yeah, we had uh, Damien and Philip and. Uh, pa uh, Patrick O'Leary from Pew and also Anna Morgan from, from SUPAC uh, join us on the trip. Um, just, uh, we might start to run through some of the uh, points, but in the, in the, cont in the whole uh, scene of things, I was, um, uh, as the IPA program um, officer, able to give the um, overall uh, sorry, program delivery um, discussions with, with the First Nations guys and also the uh, and, and also the uh, Parks Canada and other agencies, and the um, and Damien and Philip sort of filled in on all those other on-ground things and what it really means to be an Indigenous ranger in Australia. Um, so, yeah, we sort of worked it, worked the crowd as a team, and uh, yeah, it sort of uh, came off quite well, uh, despite um, having potentially like three speaking engagements in a day, um, coming to terms with um, being on the other side of the world, and um, sometimes we just had to give each other a nudge. To wake each other up before we had to go up on the stage, um, because it was uh, yeah pretty challenging uh, eight days um, across uh, all the uh, different uh, countries. It, this is just a photo of us um, in uh, Vancouver, which we started on, on the trip, um, and in a in quite a historic uh, old tree, uh, the hollow tree in Vancouver, and um, it's a it's a red gum, and. Um, but apparently they've tried to knock that down a number of times, take it away for logging and other things, and it's a bit of an eyesore, but it's um, got quite a, quite a strong history to it in the uh, Stanley Park in Vancouver there. Um, so if I just sh show you where we went to, um, we, we, went, uh, we started on the west coast, uh, uh, pulled up in Vancouver and were met by uh, uh, Anne Sam and... Uh, and Larry Innes, and uh, that was, uh, yeah, and we met a lot of the uh, First Nations uh, people of uh, First Coastal First Nations of British Columbia, uh, and had a number of meetings there. Then we uh, flew over to Edmonton, and um, and then up to meet the uh, Dene Nation of uh, of Yellowknife and uh, Northwest Territories. So right up near the Arctic Circle up there, um, and uh, we'll show you some photos of that. And then uh, back down to Edmonton and off to Winnipeg and uh, a couple of days there and some engagements and then over to Ottawa. So, um, yeah, uh, I think uh, what, 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 we don't, what this picture doesn't show is that, I mean, that's the United States there, but Canada's territories are potentially, I think they're about two and a half, three times the size of Australia. So we think, you know, we think Australia's pretty big, but this is just a huge country. Um, here we are talking uh, in Vancouver to the First Nations uh, Energy and Min Mineral Council, um, and we've also got some um, young some young ladies uh, 
who were from uh, further further south country, um, and they'd been invited along to also uh, come to some of the engagements as well. Um, they've been doing some good good things in their um, in their territories. Um, but this was a really interesting sort of just the way that we engage um, with the First Nations that we found was that we just open the floor up and have a discussion. Um, PowerPoint, which we all get used to a lot, um, it's not really a part of the, too much of the way that the um, First Nations seem to discuss a lot of things and uh, a lot of their leaders just open the floor and say, well, tell us what, what, what you're on about. And, um, and that was uh, something, uh, it, was, it was challenging for us as well um, because we like our PowerPoint and talking to slides. But um, I think we developed a lot better speaking um, terms as we went on. And um, I think we just were able to speak off, off the cuff at whatever we wanted to do towards the end. And um, you know, it was quite a benefit to us. Um, this is uh, Philip um, addressing uh, the crowd at uh, the Great Hall, the Museum of Anthropology at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Um, and we got welcomed onto country by the Squamish people. Uh, this fellow in a, uh, this fellow Victor, he gave us a, a nice welcome to country in a dance in his um, traditional dress. And you can see all the uh, statues, totem poles in the background, and it's quite an amazing um, uh, location to give a, give a talk in. And um, yeah, really rose us up, and you know you could just feel the presence of old people in the, in the place. Um, and uh, and I don't know if you can. And we had, we had numerous First Nations um, speakers there, and it was mainly the um, the uh, Haida, Haida First Nations talking about their struggles of um, Vancouver Island and um, and where they've gotten to with Parks Canada and the relationship there. So that was really inspiring to hear that, um, and and just the way that they take on the government's um, head on and um, get 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 to the um, in between line. Um, but also on top of the First Nations uh, speakers that were there, we. We were lucky enough to meet um, David Suzuki in the front. This fellow. So he, he actually um, spoke before us and then introduced us. So it was um, yeah, a bit of a privilege, I think. You guys want to talk about? Yeah, he's one of the amazing guys that fights for the First Nation people in Canada. It was a privilege to meet him. Um, he's been fighting for the um, rights for the Indigenous, the First Nation people for centuries. So he was a quite amazing man. No, no, no. Decades. <laughs> but that struggle's been going on for centuries, still going on today. Um, yeah, it was a bit cold there as well, so uh, we had to get a few jackets and that from um, some of the guys over there. And this is up in Yellowknife, at, uh, on the banks of the Great Slave Lake. and. Yeah, just, um, it was a really, really amazing um, experience to go out to one of the uh, communities that were there. And, um, it, oh, it was, it was a, a fellow by the name of Bobby Dean, who actually run a, a training center for young, young guys. And it was wonderful. He's doing actually a little an enterprise out there for himself. So he went to his lake. We, um, I ate fish and made fire under a teepee. It was wonderful and trying to play the drums. We don't play drums, we play boomerangs. It was difficult. Inside the teepee? Oh, that, that's inside the teepee. Um, yeah, eating white fish from the freshwater lakes. Yeah, it's like this. Maybe just going back onto that, uh, we, uh, me and Bibido, we, Philip, we uh, compared stories with the, uh, with the little K about this, and um, you know, this is the sort of stuff that we just do on a on a campfire on a beach, uh, in uh, Bardi country, um, but you know, the difference is that uh, we're inside a teepee and it's minus 18 degrees outside, and um, there's. You know, you sort of the smoke, the smoke uh, flavour from the wood um, is is really nice as well. But um, now that was, uh, I think, yellow knife was probably um, uh, probably the highlight just because we were on country and um, and seeing somebody's country. Uh, not that we went on country in other places, but it was very much um, um, more of an urban setting as well. 
and, and that night we were able to taste bison and other, other, other traditional foods too. Um, then from there we went, well actually we, we did come back down to Edmonton as well and uh, had, you know they're, they're quite renowned for their uh, steaks so had um, some pretty good steaks there but then we went over to uh, uh, Winnipeg and uh, presented at the University of Winnipeg in Manitoba um, and, uh, and again quite, a, quite an interested audience and some of, the, uh, some of the talkers were quite inspirational and really thanked us for our travels to come over and, um, and we thanked them. I don't smoke, but some of the elders from Winnipeg were absolutely wonderful people, similar to our elders back at home, asked us to come around and have a, you know, have a traditional smoke with them. I'm the only one who turned up that day. My colleagues had a big night that night. <laughs> That's why I'm the only one in the photo. Um, we actually um, lost one of those old, old fellows that I was sitting down with, so it was a very touching moment to sit down and, and, um, and do this with them. Uh, it was a privilege for myself to be there and to sit down and have this. Um, yeah, I was disappointed that my colleagues didn't turn up. Um, we were very fortunate to arrive in Winnipeg when they were at so much wonderful events. They, um, the, the night before this, they had the uh, national awards, so we were red covered in the uh, to the national awards, um, yeah, drove around in limousines and and very privileged the next day they had the um, the national powwow. Um, so we've only seen Indians and cowboys in movies and again this is another touching moment for us to see people in traditional uniform celebrating, you know, their history and very proud to show their culture and it was a very privilege to be there. Yeah, and I think um, I think the uh, scale of what we saw there at um, at Winnipeg was was also very impressive, and the amount of support by the Canadian government and state um, uh, governments towards uh, an event like this. And uh, I sort of, you know, I can think of a couple of things in Australia which we we may have s uh, similar events, but not on this sort of scale. Just in terms of getting dances together, getting people together from all, all over Canada. Um, and it was yeah really impressive to see the drummers and the and the dancers at, at this um, at this festival. And then uh, yeah we had to um, some of the other engagements were a little bit more fancy as well. And um, we yeah a few were able to get us a, a couple of tickets to the Canadian Aboriginal Music Awards. And it was uh, I think it was really good to see the celebration of. Um, um, you know, First Nations peoples. Uh, it's this is this is pretty much the same thing as uh, the Australian Deadly Awards, um, and uh, you know we've got that that same thing going on. And uh, you know, you know we we ran into some people who we, we didn't know from a bar of soap, but they had people just screaming for them as they walked around the corner. And um, uh, we even met an Australian country singer who won an award over there too, um, from um, New South Wales. You know, from New South Wales. Um, but this was a this was a fun fun night and um, just a celebration of um, Canadian Aboriginal music. Um, but also interesting to see that um, they had uh, an award for one of their um, one of their really uh, lifetime achievement awards for uh, the, our equivalent to Archie Roach in Australia. Um, and he was singing about yeah the residential homeschools and, um, and and that as well. So I really brought that home for some of our people. Um, just like to thank, um, yeah, all the co coastal First Nations of British Columbia, uh, Little K Gene Nation of the Northwest Territories, Poplar River First Nations. Sophia, who's here, um, we've got Stephen and Charlie who are here as well, and Anne, Sam, um, from from uh, that side, uh, Grand Council of the Cree, Cree First Nations. Oh, the other thing was that when we went to Ottawa, we met with the Grand Grand Chief of of the Cree, and that was amazing a uh, moment. Um, well, well, we spent about a day with him actually, and he was uh, discussing his um, the the hard decisions that the Cree had to make um, in terms of their hydroelectricity agreements and um, and where they where they've come to um, from from the early days, um, and I suppose that was something that we took took from that um, as well. Uh, Patrick O'Leary from the Pure Environment Group, 
who was our fearless leader on this trip, um, uh, Larry Innes, uh, our, Can our, our Canadian interpreter, uh, Miles Richardson, who was just a deadly speaker all the, t all the whole trip and um, looked after us and introduced us at all our events and uh, Parks Canada and um, the Canadian Boreal uh, Forest Initiative staff. Do you want to say anything else? Mm. Yeah, um, before we finish, uh, you know, this WIN, WIN conference has the opportunity to support Indigenous group. Uh, we, we were fortunate to meet some guys from the Green Line, Green Line movement. They came to our area and we went and done some um, surveyors there, fauna and fauna surveys. Um, you know, to support an organization like them who's struggling over there in Africa, just go onto the website and purchase some of the items because the, the money you spent with them will go back to help those people sitting right next to him. So, you know, that's how we can work, just by purging a little item from somewhere, sharing knowledge, it'll go a long way. So I encourage you, you know, purchase stuff from the, the, the Green Line movement, because it'll help our brothers and sisters there in Africa. Um, uh, and one more thing, we have to thank our, uh, our big major body in the Kimberleys, the Kimberley Land Council, so thank you very much. Okay, thanks uh, guys for helping me out with that presentation. Um, now we've just got one more and, um, and we'd just like to invite the final group to present on their exchange and it's the uh, Maori group from New Zealand uh, and their host community in Australia, the Yalata Ranges. Alessandro and I run the land management team at Yalata. Uh, Yalata is on the far west coast of South Australia and uh, we were lucky enough to host the New Zealand group. Um, we had an amazing time and uh, I think it's a lot to do with the company we shared and we would really like to say thank you for that. So, hand it over. Oh, yeah. We went on camp for the whole week. That's the difference between New Zealand and Australia. <coughs> bit of a shock for everyone. Uh, we started off on the coast and we headed off north uh, inland to the Nullarbor Plains and then uh, we came back around on the coast. Uh, kia ora koutou. good afternoon everyone. Um, firstly, just really like to acknowledge the Larrakee people. Thank you so much for having us. And the WIN conference, it's such a pleasure to be here and see so many beautiful indigenous faces. So it's a real joy to be here. So my name's Kara Edwards and um, we're all going to get up and have a bit of a quarter or a bit of a talk to you about our experience. So, as Sandro said, really big difference between New Zealand and Australia. So, the lands where we came from, big mountains, lots of hills, massive rivers, huge lakes. And so we ended up pretty much in the desert where there weren't any hills, any lakes or any rivers. Uh, there was a tree, I think. I think there was one tree. <laughs> so, um, we set off last week, um, as Sandro said, we were out with these guys for four days and when we were planning our trip, he made it really clear to us that he wasn't going to show us how they, how they work, rather that they were going to show us how they lived and they didn't let us down on that front. Um, yeah, it was a really stark contrast for us. So we landed in Sojourner and there were flies everywhere. We don't have lots of flies at home. We have sand flies that bite, so that was the first thing that we noticed. And it was really hot. Um, we got out to the desert and I think for the first time in months it rained, so we like to think we brought you the rain. So if anyone else wants rain, we'll come to your country and we can bring that with us. Um, uh, we were blown away by the scale and the size of the landscape. We were literally driving for 100 kilometres before we found a corner. 
And so we thought at one point we were just going around in a continuous loop because um, the road, and you, you'd turn around and look in any direction, you could see 100 kilometres and it was just flat. So it was amazing and it was really beautiful and, and on the second day we started to appreciate that the land does, you know, change. Um, the plants change, we went from grasslands to shrublands to trees and then back again. So this is our new family. Um, and one of the locals, the dingo there. So um, the photo shows here, this is all of our crew that went out. We had, I think, eight vehicles. Um, most of them were quite high off the ground. Sadly, we had one that was quite low to the ground, which wasn't really a good idea. Um, this is where we went and camped out for one night because we had the rain, we had to go and find shelter. So this was our home for the night, which was fantastic. Um, I think the thing that probably inspired us most though was the people um, that we had on our group. Um, Sandra and I were having a chat last night on the balcony and both agreed that for us it was about connecting as individuals um, and that was really special for us. Seeing how intact um, the culture was and how people really live, they're working the way that they live and their cultural values are the compass um, for the management and the way that they look after land, so that was really special for us. And we were invited to participate in um, food um, preparation techniques that were ancient, um, really quite similar to home, um, and we knew that it was feeds your body, but it feeds your soul, and it connects you to those hundreds and hundreds of generations before who have um, live the way that these guys were living and doing the same thing. So we got to go to waterholes um, and see places that are just, we couldn't believe that, how did people find their way across the desert to these waterholes? Um, but they did, and that's how they survived and are still there today. Um, as the trip went on, we couldn't believe how similar the cultures were. While the context was completely different, the landscapes were really different but our approach to how we utilise land and plants and animals was pretty much the same in the way that we um, utilise medicines and the way that we interpret the environment around us, how close we are to spirit um, and how that drives the passion and people's commitment to the work they do. So well, here's the handsome Nathan and his beautiful trusty dog Doro who um, we went looking one night, we turned around and the, our kai was gone, the rabbit that we had been cooking for dinner was gone, so Doro ate the rabbit, we didn't. Um, we got to experience some amazing things. I've never been to a supermarket before and bought a kangaroo's tail for a start. I think this is what the guys might have been expecting that they were going to get, um, some good looking sort of warriors, but instead they got uh, us. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. So they got, this is what they got instead. So I hope they were happy with what they got. Um, it was the best we could come up with at short notice, so. <laughs> so we, um, throughout the trip, we were, we were gathering some of our observations. Um, each night we'd kind of sit down in our little huddle and talk about what had stood out for us for the day. And some of the things that we um, recorded were the expansive, uh, wide open spaces. We couldn't believe the amount of territory that these guys are covering. It was just, it was immense. You know, they drive eight hours to get to work. Uh, we drive 20 minutes to get to work, work eight hours and then drive home. <laughs> um, and the, the difference, I mean, they, from the Great Australian Bight all the way and across the Nalaba Plains to the Red Sandlands, it was just, yeah, it was amazingly huge. Um, we were awakened by the knowledge that the Yalata are still so connected to their place and their culture and their language. Um, they were really shy and we sort of felt that we only had four days together and after the four days we were just getting to know each other and then we had to leave which was really sad. Um, so we, we think next time around we really need to have two weeks. So yeah, let's make that happen. Um, we had a lot of mis misconceptions coming in. I thought there was going to be deadly creatures everywhere I went. And so, you know, massive spiders and snakes and crocodiles, well, you know, no crocodiles in the desert, hello. Um, but there weren't anything deadly, so that was fantastic. Um, the people were just so um, hospitable to us um, in a really low key, not in your face way. I think as Kiwis we can be a little bit uh, in your face, but these guys were just lovely 
and really humble. Um, and we felt like we were just so privileged to get an insight into the culture. And it was a, you know, we flying away, we sort of thought it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, yeah, what else? Um, I guess we came in as strangers and we really feel that we're um, coming away from this experience with a whole new family. It's just that it's a family that's a long way away. And so we're really keen to explore how we can utilise the exchanges to, to start really getting to work together because we really felt that before you can start really engaging, you have to know each other as people and we felt that we're just sort of starting to, you know, touch the iceberg here. Um, oh, this shot here was fantastic. This is, um, we got to see um, and participate in traditional kangaroo cooking um, and eating, which was, yeah, fantastic. The difference here is the, um, the meat's kind of only half cooked, whereas at home we, we cook everything really well. So here it's only half cooked so that you get the moisture um, out of the animals, which makes perfect sense. But I must admit, I was sort of a little bit like, oh, it's looking a little bit rare. Um, but it was great. We got to eat lots of wild things. I don't think we saw a salad or a vegetable for four days. <laughs> so maybe one. We, yeah, I think I had an orange once. Um, yeah, it was just an incredible experience. We're really grateful to the community, grateful to Julia Gillard for, you know, paying for us to get here and making it all happen. And um, yeah, it was just amazing. So, any others want to come? So I'm just going to put the guys on the spot and get them to come and share some of their experiences. Ah, kia ora natato. greetings. I, um, I'd just like to support uh, the acknowledgements of gratitude and thanks uh, to Parks Forum and especially um, what I deem as our whanau, our extended whanau. To you two and every, everyone else of the other mob that supported us out in the field, uh, it, it'll be a memory that I treasure forever. In fact, it'll be a memory we all treasure uh, collectively. Um, I'm trying to think of something really, really um, pointed, I guess, in, in how I saw the experience. And one thing that does come to my mind is that the way to a man's stomach is through food. So I really enjoyed the experiences of being able to share a lot of the dishes, a lot of the wild animals, the food that, that they would normally eat. So I, once again, it was, it was a real privilege. Uh, we did get down and dirty at one part, and as I understand it, um, there was a sign, a very significant cultural um, sign of uh, accepting us, um, and that was to get down and um, partake in the drinking of the blood of the Malu. Interesting point for some of us that are foreigners to the shores of Australia. Um, there's a V8 Commodore. So it was something else I learned along the way. The V8 Commodore, the Malu, is named after the kangaroo. So that's something I'll take back and tell all our families at home. Guess what? So um, just once again, without um, we're, we're possibly quite getting quite tired with the sessions, but I'd just like to once again acknowledge everybody uh, within the room, all the mobs here, um, and especially our family here. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Oh, kia ora everyone. I'll just jump on the back of uh, uh, our companions here. And uh, I'd just like to say uh, thank you to Parks Forum, uh, to the Australian Government for letting us come over, to Alfano and Yalata, Saduna. Uh, some of the things I took away was uh, the kangaroo tail was absolutely uh, delicious. It's similar to uh, what we have at home, uh, our pork bone and uh, our lamb's tails. So, yeah, that's uh, one of my new favourite foods, and uh, thanks for that, Aussie. Cheers. Uh, kia ora, everybody. Greetings. Um, yeah, I'd just like to thank um, Parks Forum for giving us this opportunity to um, go and partake with the Yalara mob and Sandra and his crew for um, teaching us their ways and their customs, traditions. And um, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Got to try uh, turkey while well, we got turkey back home. Thought it was um, one of the ones that goes gobble, 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 but <laughs> then found out, uh, no, nah, actually it wasn't. It's um, when they're full adult, they're about at that height, so that was probably um, 
one of the highlights for me was getting to try their turkey and what I found with um, their food was that back home our food's really gamey whereas um, Sanjay Jindam's food is, doesn't have that gamey taste, it almost tastes like um, you're getting served something from a restaurant so thank you bro and thank you to everyone here for um, partaking in our presentation. Cheers. Yeah, um, yeah, my name's Nathan Williams. I uh, originally born in Alice Springs, uh, moved down south, um, living along the coast where the good country is. Um, um, I, I work for the uh, Department of Environment, Water and Natural Resources, uh, South Australian Government, and part of my role is a project officer. I um, go out to uh, two um, major Aboriginal communities, which is Yalata Community, where Sandra works, and um, also uh, the Old Valley Community, which is about uh, 500 k's north of Yalata. It's a long way, a lot of driving. Um, yeah, last week we was really privileged to have our um, New Zealand Rangers visit. Uh, as you can see on the photo there, that's just some of the guys that we had. They absolutely enjoyed it, um, enjoyed the company, enjoyed the knowledge transfer. Um, and uh, yeah, all our New Zealand Rangers, it, same thing. Yeah, they enjoyed it, also the knowledge transfer and all that. Um, yeah, the, f uh, the first time we had a this is the first time we had a, um, a uh, exchange program in our part of the world. Um, so yeah, hopefully there'll be more to come. Good everyone, my name is Matapura, and I might be called the uh, Pakaki, or probably the older one of the group of rangers, possibly. <laughs> Anyhow, my learnings, I can say that I didn't quite know what to expect uh, when I uh, agreed to come on the program, but I think one of the first things I learnt was to experience and be, be uh, engaged with the depth of culture that exists within uh, the Yalata community. Um, and so to the Yalata whanau are here, awesome everyone. Um, I also uh, used the experience to draw on what I can take back with me and uh, I think I was, I've been inspired uh, to the fact or the idea that if you want to show leadership in a community you've got to, you've got to have a vision uh, but that vision has to be owned by the community the vision for whatever you want to achieve um, and uh, I'm, I'm going home to do some fencing around a wetland that I haven't fenced before. I have a small farm and, uh, and uh, uh, it might stay a fragile, somewhat a fragile environment, so I'm, I'm inspired to go home and fence that off uh, and to uh, take home the learnings about the inspirational um, engagement with the Yalata community that, we, that I experienced. Uh, that, that inspiration is in the the living culture that exists and so I want to go home and and take that I guess a refreshed uh, sense of uh, uh, inspiration and uh, and what's the word might be uh, energy uh, back to mine community uh, uh, in um, Otago which is in the South Island of New Zealand and uh, and hopefully uh, we'll do some we're doing some good things, but hopefully we'll do some better things uh, at our local level and um, within our tribal uh, vision uh, within the South Island. So it's been a great experience, thanks to all, as others have said. And uh, the, I guess the best thing we've got is, some, is to meet some really great people and make some friends that we think I know will... will uh, friendships that will last for a long time. So kia ora kato. Thank you very much. Just finally, um, which is one of the traditions of, of our country, um, is to embellish all our speakers. So we'd just like to close, close the session with a waiata or a song. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh.
Okay, thank you to our Maori presenters and Yellas arrangers. Um, I'd like to thank all the presenters today. Uh, it was fantastic to hear from, from you all and um, all doing land and sea management across the globe uh, with similar and different issues um, that you're facing in your own country. Um, I hope this exchange experience has enabled both our visitors and host communities to improve their knowledge and skills and consolidate genuine partnerships. This is going to be essential to the ongoing success of the WIND network. Thanks for your time today and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.